basically this. If you choose the exact right limits, I think you can make a game at the speed of light. If you choose the right limits, um, all, all your creativity is channeled just perfectly, and your production time is much lower. Uh, I have found that if you choose two limits that are actually mutually impossible, it really sucks. Um, yeah, this is just creating linear games is easier in this aspect than open world games. Um, creating uh, just simple structures for you to pour the content into. When I design, I tend to um, get into a mental rut. So when I was making multiplayer games uh, several years back, all my new ideas were sort of inherently multiplayer. And when I designed small games, all my new ideas were inherently able to be built in a small period of time. Um, I do find that this is, this is good, because when you get into a category, you, wanna, you want your new ideas to also be in the category. Right now I'm designing RTS games. Most of my ideas that I come up with are RTS games. Uh, I came up with one during Bernie's talk. Uh, I'll be using your camera view somehow, I'm sure, in an RTS. Right, anyway, um, one cool trick with this is, is once you understand this, uh, this mental habit, is knock off half a dozen prototypes in the category you want to get, get your mind flowing in, and you just throw the prototypes out, you, you don't publish them, they're, they're really quick, but you, you get used to designing um, in this specific, specific rut. Uh, so, Basically, my, my problems were I would either design too small because of my previous experience doing small games, or too big, or too shallow because I would take a small idea and I would try and stretch it over too big of an area. Uh, practice helps. Um, when making medium games, which is what most people here want to make, nobody really wants to make the mega project, the GTA crossed with World of Warcraft, uh, and small games like the ones we just made are, are too small to pay the rent with. But medium games can be quite hard because one of the things they tend to do is slip. They start getting more and more complex and you let them run and then they end up being a mega project. Or they don't get big enough. Um, I sort of went all over the place. I listed a bunch of uh, things that I've run into and um, had problems with. But um, I think the most important thing is that if you can design a game, a project, that is the perfect size for you, for your resources, for your team, um, with the right limits, the, the game feels good to make. Uh, sometimes when I get a project that is just perfect, I can't imagine not working right now, I skip lunch, but sometimes when you have the wrong limit or the wrong size or the wrong team or the wrong resources, it becomes hell. So designing your project and how you approach the project and what you do with the project, as well as just the gameplay, um, is very important. That's my talk. Uh, any questions? I have one. Uh, you, I know a lot of people in here want to be pure indie and only create games, but have you considered having a part-time job so you can, so you don't need to stress out ideas? Um, and let them mature? Well, it's, it's, I tend to come up with a lot of ideas. I don't know whether that's just me or through habit, but I, I, I designed six games on the plane here. Um, I've, I've filled up about 40 pages since I got to Miss Crap Sweden. Um, it's, not, it's not a question of a lack of ideas, it's how I approach them. So um, I'm, I've started getting into structuring, how many hours I'm working in a day, what my environment is, and um, yeah, and, and how I uh, how I filter out ideas. Uh, the mutually exclusive um, um, limits. Limits. Could you give an example of that? Like um, so, I think the one I used earlier was uh, no interface versus complexity. Um, because I made Sound Skies was five minutes long, and I really a lot of people liked the uh, the no interface, and they were telling me about it, and that's great. And when I set out to make a, a two-hour game out of that, I was like, sure, no interface. But 
At some point, I made it open world in one section, and doing that without a compass ended up taking a huge chunk of time, and I should have just added a compass. Um, I got into, for that specific one, finding solid methods of conveying information to the player that don't that didn't break my no interface rule. Uh, that helped. But basically, generally, I find it's visual versus gameplay. And if you're hardcore enough on both, you end up looping. Because if, if they're subtle enough, you end up coming up with a feature, and then it breaks this rule. So you adjust it, and you adjust it, and adjust it until it breaks this rule. And then you go back. Um, in this case, I would come up with something that I want to do, but you need interface. So I'd pare down the interface until it was not understandable, because it was some abstract dot floating around the plane. And then it wouldn't actually help the gameplay, and then the gameplay would break and would force it towards doing interface. The, the main thing is when they're so subtle, you don't actually realize you're looping, because the whole, the whole loop takes, takes a week of iterations. Um, so I do tend to look at the actual limits I have. I write down my rules, uh, and I change them a lot. But I write down the rules I have, and then sometimes when I write them down, I can see two that are sort of... Are the other rules, the limitations? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I have my wall of rules, but for example, they can be anything, they are limitations. They're anything between game length or game concept, but also I want to use a specific way of turning the units or a specific camera or not a specific camera. And um, it's nice to say, I can't do this, because then when it pops up in my head, I go, nope, I already thought of that. I'm going to not worry about it. Uh, how do you fight against the that kind of feeling when you're making a game and then you get another idea you think to be really great and then actually uh, I myself lose easily mo motivation when I get a new idea and then the old idea which I've been working, working on seems really lame suddenly and the new idea seems like oh I must, must start working on that so do you get such feelings and if you get... Oh yeah, um, no, no, no question. I know that exact <laughs> experience. Uh, I do two things. Um, well, three, the first of which being I do lots of little projects, so I tend to get the ideas that I really want to do out of the way. Because if you're publishing two or three games in a month sometimes, you run out of things you really desperately want to do. Um, I get people who've never seen my game before to play it, or to look at it, or to watch the trailer, and when they love it, uh, it reminds me that it's a good project. It's also really nice when you're demoing and you walk up to your booth from behind and the person doesn't know that you're the guy who made it. And he you know, says, wow, this is really beautiful. I really like this. And you're like, oh, right. Yeah, OK. I, I still like my game. Um, the other thing I do is when I come up with an awesome idea, and I really want to make it, but I'm working on this big project that I really can't quit, I have a mental switch where I take, I feel full of enthusiasm for this idea, and I put the enthusiasm into my project. So I feel the enthusiasm, and I'm coding the other project. And you'd be surprised how much that just blends as you work. But maybe I'm just nuts. <laughs> All right, is that it?